Hello everyone. One of the things that I often find myself thinking about over and over again is the algorithm that the internet takes based off of trying to learn about your habits and what you're interested in. So it's like the uh, ads that show up on the sites after you click on another ad and it's like all right, I ordered underwear on the internet. Now I must buy all the underwear in the world. <laughs> or like the time that I looked up a pregnancy belly on Amazon because I was curious about, um, I, I was curious about, uh, doing a particular job at work while pregnant without actually having to have the baby to do so. And suddenly I was flooded with a bunch of fertility ads for the next week. So obviously the sites try to curate all this stuff because they want you to be interested in the content. So I spend a lot of time on YouTube. I mean, I'm posting stuff on YouTube, not that weird. But it's making me wonder, um, what suggestions does YouTube have that could influence my knitting? Like, what if I based a piece of knitting off of a random video that YouTube advertises to me? Alright, so, I, uh, I have this habit of when I'm getting ready for work, when I'm brushing my teeth, I will play a song from my phone through the headphones because otherwise I will get distracted by myself in the mirror and I will start talking to myself and I will lose track of time. And hearing the song will force me to keep track of the time and leave the house so I can be a responsible adult. <laughs> and YouTube not only like offers random videos, they offer playlists. So I'm going to look up two different videos. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to look up like two different videos. So I'm going to count 17 down and find out what video is 17 down, which I might be really putting myself on blast here. I'm also, when I find a music video, I'm going to find out what the 10th song is, and then we're going to base something off of the 10th song. So we're going to do the regular video first. So let's see. I have YouTube open on my phone right now. So I got one, two, three, four. That's the mix. Okay. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, another mix, fifteen, sixteen, another mix, seventeen. All right. All right, this video has potential. So the title of the video that popped up is Amazing Miniature Creations That Are that are At Another Level. It's by the Quantastic channel. And it's about nine minutes long, if you can kind of see here. Obviously, I'll link the videos that I'm referencing at the bottom. So after watching the video, I should probably see what I could make. Although, I mean, it has potential. We'll see. I'm going to watch it now. All right, so I just finished watching that video. And the entire video was um, kind of similar to watching a bunch of, like, TikToks all in a row in a compilation. And I've been watching like some art-based TikToks recently, which is probably why this was recommended to me. But basically it's just like a compilation of people making really tiny but realistic looking stuff. 
So obviously if I were to make a piece of knitting based off of this video, it would be a really, really small piece of knitting. Now, they didn't leave anything half finished here. They left, they, they completed the project. So instead of like, um, like I actually have a pattern in a book where um, the person makes a pin, but they leave the knitting needles on the pin and um, they like leave the piece unfinished. So I want to be able to do that. But I would have to think about what I could make that would be adorable while small. I'm going to need a little bit more thought about that one. We're going to see. All right, so this is what I'm thinking about for the mini thing. I have some embroidery floss left over from when I refused the muzzle of the unicorn. So we're gonna go with that. And then I've got a bunch of smaller knitting needles in here. So I'm thinking in this case, if I could find them, yeah. I go with like these smaller knitting needles they're like a size one they're the width of a toothpick and i can make something with that if i decide to crochet instead i've also got like a smaller crochet hook i just don't know what i'm actually going to make with this i'm leaning somewhere between blanket or bag if i go with the blanket route i'm probably going to knit it if i go with the bag route i'm probably going to crochet it anyway we'll see where it goes all right, so I actually ended up making a little bit of a scarf. So I decided I wanted to knit it. And uh, I originally cast on 10 stitches because I was thinking like, oh, I'll just make a little rug. I'll put it underneath something. And then when I reached the end of one of the things, I realized that I wasn't happy with the ultimate shape that I ended up with and that it would have been better for a scarf. And... Despite like using embroidery thread from the same location, they didn't provide the same length, so they ran out at different times. So the orange was the shortest and the pink was the longest, which is why there's like a little bit of pink on the end here. But I was like, scarves can be a little bit funky, like I can just do the thing. So I just started with the rainbow effect and kind of turned itself into the bi pride flag and then it just turned into pink. And I didn't bother cutting the uh, thing, like the, not the thing, the uh, embroidery floss when I changed rows. So there's like this kind of maypole thing going up the side. I don't know who's going to wear the scarf or like what's going to wear the scarf because it's going to be an, 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 an animate object. <laughs> um but it turned out kind of cute. And honestly, like you look at this, you know it's a scarf. It's like small, but you know it's a scarf. And also, despite the fact that it's like super small, like that's actually the appeal for making scarves. Cause usually when you make a full size scarf, um, like a full size scarf, it takes so long to make it gets so boring but here I got the joy of saying that I was making a scarf but it took a short amount of time and so I never really got bored with it actually the doll from this video from a previous video is here well this this is long enough for her there you go we have a new scarf for a doll. Gives her a nice vibrant update to whatever this pastel nightmare is. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So there's that project. And it ended up like fitting the entire vibe because it's like very easy to believe that this is a scarf. And that whole video I was basing it off of was basically making realistic looking things that were just smaller. And I accomplished that. All right, so now we're gonna try this again. 
where um, I'm gonna actually look for the musical mix and then I'm going to take the 10th video from the musical mix and see what song is going to create the next like knitted or crocheted project. So we're gonna scroll down till I see a mix being offered to me. Well, that's just a song, that's not a mix there. Oh, it's waiting a little bit this time. I felt like I saw like three different mix by the time I hit this last time. I also find it really interesting where it's like this new feature where it's like you start watching videos of a particular channel and then they offer this other channels like viewers of this channel also offer this channel which is an amazing tool for the algorithm honestly aha okay I found the first mix the bass song for this mix is towards the sun from the home soundtrack which is sung by Rihanna uh, this that video was suggested by a different thing. So we're just gonna pause it here and I'm gonna count down 10 and see what song is suggested to me. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't think I've ever heard that song before. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's another song by Rihanna it's called Hate That I Love You Spanglish version it looks like the type of video where it's just um, an audio recording so uh, they just have like a still picture and then they play the music in the background which honestly I do play a lot of videos like that because as I mentioned before, I'm often listening to them when I'm brushing my teeth, so I don't really mind if the picture is not moving because that's a distraction. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to find out what Hate That I Love You sounds like and we'll see. All right, so I've listened to the song now and, um, I mean, it's a love song. <laughs> it's a pretty typical love song. Um, very like an easy going vibe, although I'd say this one's kind of like the easy going, um, chill version of Can't Remember to Forget You <laughs> that Rihanna pairs up with Shakira about, which honestly is more of a banger than this one. This one's more like chill, like, uh, yeah, I want to be upset at you, but I can't, why, why don't? Like, why can't I be upset at you? So, I feel like if I want to capture the essence of the song in, like, something knitted or crocheted, I need to start with the yarn. Uh, I gotta let the yarn tell me what it wants to be. So, it's kind of like a skein of yarn that, um... I both like and hate at the same time. And I think I have that skein of yarn upstairs. It's more of a fashion uh, skein of yarn, which honestly, I mean, Rihanna's a fashion queen. It's, there's no disputing that. She has her definite unique sense of style. And I think this skein of yarn could also reflect that. Um, I also know I have a very small amount of it, so I gotta figure out what I can make without having to lose a game of yarn chicken to it, where it's like, am I gonna finish it? Am I gonna finish it? Unless it's maybe a border to something. It'd probably be like something clashing too. 
because sometimes when you have like a clashing I feel like when you got like clashing colors or patterns sometimes they go together and you want to hate it but it's like because they don't match and you want them to match but it's like <laughs> that that actually works Maybe it could be lingerie. I mean, Rihanna has that uh, Savage Fenty line. And I do have a pattern for bikini. Am I going to be making a furry bikini? <laughs> I. Oh, yeah. I think that's going to get the vibe of the song. Like. I can imagine like having a love-hate relationship with a furry bikini because you look sexy but then you can't get wet and getting wet is kind of like the point of a bikini, right? Like you take it to the ocean, you splash around in the water. Okay. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to make a furry bikini. When I was thinking about the yarn I would hate and love at the same time, this is what I was thinking of. So it's an eyelash yarn right here. It's gray. It's a very beautiful, flashy yarn. But the thing is, working with eyelash yarn is super annoying. It doesn't always turn out the way it is. I usually avoid this type of yarn when I go to the craft store, but I got it as part of a surprise sampler, so I was very happy to receive it then. But instead of making the whole bikini with this, I was thinking of making it with this yarn and then having this yarn as kind of like a fringe, so it had like a furry edging to it. And it kind of looks like it matches here, but uh, what you can't really see on the camera that I can kind of see in person is that when the light hits it the right way, there's this green metallic, um, I got thread interwoven inside, which gives it this greenish hue, which is not a hue this yarn has at all. So the tones do not match. The tones absolutely clash. I mean, I do have this other furry yarn that I could go with instead, which might go better with this, but it, for some reason it doesn't seem as bright as when I clash these two together. And I found my pattern for it too. The pattern that I made before and did not work out very well like this. It's a dare to wear bikini. And uh, I do have another bikini pattern that's a little bit more reasonable, but uh, this is based off of a Rihanna song. And we know Rihanna takes all the fashion risks. So let's go with a, a more risky bikini here. <laughs> anyway, I better go find myself some knitting needles and cast this on, although I should probably roll it up first. That makes sense, right? <laughs> Roll it up before casting it on so that way it doesn't cause any knots. All right, so this is the fur bikini, which I will now turn around to show you it all. And in case it wasn't glaringly obvious, the reason why I'm wearing a bodysuit while also showing you how the bikini looks on me it's because if I didn't, I would be too sexy for the internet. And the pattern called this dare to wear. And they were absolutely right about that. All right. <laughs> um, so I originally made this part too long because it split open on me. And I just had to go fix it. But even so, like, it seems like there's... Like with the way the pattern was, you would expect the nipples to be right about here. My nipples are more like right here. So wrong, one wrong move and boom, I become a card carrying member of free the nipple movement. All right. <laughs> and then it's like, I mean, I was able to incorporate the fur, the furry aspect of it. And it like made it look a lot more extensive, which I guess is a thing that people aim for. But then we have these bottoms, right? These bottoms are literally sitting at my hips. 
Okay, so my waist, like typically when I have like a set of bottoms, I want them to sit like at my waist. So like I kind of aim for like that mid waist look. And then when I turn around to the other side, I mean, my literal butt crack starts like an inch like above the end of the bikini, which is like right about here. And then um, if I were to pull it up like it was a thong, then the front's going to go down and then it's hello pubic hair. So this bikini is not going to make it to any beaches. <laughs> Like, this is definitely a bikini that you wear as lingerie in the bedroom, where you have your partner go, like, you wear it so that way your partner goes, like, wow, you look hot. Uh, come over here. And I was like, yes, please, take it off of me. I'm glad you like how I look, but it's uncomfortable. Like, I put the fur in this part right here, but uh, it's itchy. Happiness against bare skin is itchy. I don't feel it so much back here because I got the bodysuit, but I can tell you without the bodysuit, that would also be bothering me. I mean, it looks good. And if you think about like what this was based on, which was a Rihanna song, which I think the actual title's like slipping me right now, but it has like both hate and love. This incorporates both the hate and love thing because I mean, while I hate how this feel, I love how it looks. <laughs> and I can imagine like here, this would be like severe underboob situation too. I, I can imagine like how I, how I hate how it feels. I, other people would love how it looks and that kind of incorporates the duality of that thing. And also this looks very much like something Rihanna would wear. <laughs> Which it was based on a Rihanna song, so is Rihanna my height? I know Beyonce is my height. I don't know if Rihanna is my height though. So yeah, I I accomplished what I meant I set out to accomplish with uh, this fur bikini, and I will probably never wear it for the internet again. <laughs> well, that was today's entertainment. Have a nice day.